Hello everyone and welcome back to another Babylon Nines video with myself and Sloth today. Potential rumour, potential more than a rumour, Tosin of Fulham, uh, I'm not going to pronounce his surname because I can't, uh, is being linked with a move to West Ham. Um, obviously he's been, uh, is going to become a free agent in the summer, 26 years old, and it looks like there's going to be a few Premier League clubs trying to tie him down if they can, if he doesn't want to stay at Fulham with West Ham, one of those interested in pushing for the move in the summer, apparently to a few sources online, which has now been confirmed by X as well. So there definitely is substance to this one, Sloth. It's a player you've mentioned to us in our group chat on Twitter so many times. It's a player you've you've highly spoken about. Talk to me about Tosin in general. Why are your feelings towards him positive? And why would you like to see him uh, join West Ham in the summer? Well, for, like first of all, I think we'll, we'll just get the get the elephant out of the room. He's a big old unit. For, yeah. <laughs> so he's six foot four, which for, you know, Sullivan and Moyes is is basically the, the key criteria. But more importantly for West Ham at the moment, you know, if we do get European football next season, he is homegrown. So yeah. he does have a split uh, nationality. He could represent Nigeria in the future if he wanted to, but he, he, he seems pretty set on on um, trying to get a place for England, um, which is fantastic. And I think his performances this, this season in particular um, have done him no harm in that. I'm I'm very surprised that he's not had an England call up. Yeah. Uh, in general, to be honest, it's um, pretty baffling. I think when you look at his stats from this season, he's not. He's he has missed a few games for injury. Um, that's not something he makes a habit of doing. Uh, you know, he doesn't pick up knocks regularly, but. He started uh, 16 games this season, played 18 in total. So he's come on as a sub um, just twice. But he does tend to average 80 minutes on the pitch. Yeah, it looks uh, like he had groin surgery at the beginning of the season, which kept him out for like 10 games. So, yeah, it, yeah. And since then, he's since then he's been back and, you know, fully fit. So that's that's kind of what you need to know. He, he is reportedly um, quite a quick healer, which we like at West Ham. but. Um, in terms of his overall ability, as I mentioned, he is a big physical unit, but he's also very composed on the ball. Um, his reading of the game is very strong, but he is aerially dominant. And yep. if you're looking at next season and potentially he's more of a right sided centre back, um, whether we were potentially looking at switching systems and maybe playing three at the back with wing backs, whatever we choose to do. Him and Mavropanos could be a fantastic centre-back pairing because there is so much pace, strength and aerial dominance there that it would be a real difficult one to break down from, from any angle, not just set pieces. Yeah, 100%. I think when we were doing the research here and bringing it, I'm going to bring up this in a second, but how he compares to our centre-backs and maybe some other notable ones in the Premier League is quite important and you know we look at hit look at the difference here between uh tosin and the likes of zuno and mavropanos who have probably played the most minutes for us this season you can kind of see there he's he's been better than both in in pretty much every department um obviously this is comparing top five top five european leagues um and again it puts you into percenti percentiles based on that so you can see there the blue is obviously tosin where he's pretty much outperforming all of them. Zuma, the pink one that's pretty clustered in the middle, is very low down on the on the, uh, on the the system here. Uh, and Mavropanos as well. So based on what you said, Sloth, you know, looking at this, what type of centre-back, uh, you know, you, you kind of touched on his strengths there, but what type of centre-back is Tosin and, and what would he bring to West Ham? Well, he, he as I mentioned, he's he's very strong on the ball. Um, he's not the quickest in the turn. That is perhaps his, his one big weakness. Because he has got such a long stride, when he does get up to pace, he is actually quite quick. Um, not quite as blistering as Mavropanos, but it's his reading of the game and aerial dominance, his control of the ball and composure on it as well. One of the key things that um, we'll be looking at is his errors. You know, his, his errors leading to shots and his errors leading to goals uh, against Fulham. They're both zero. Yeah. You know, that which is fantastic by anyone's metric, but also 
in comparison to some of West Ham's <laughs> centre backs, that is a you know that's a godsend. And, Extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got five clean sheets this season for Fulham. So as I mentioned, that composure does tend to um, really spread to those around him. He's not exactly a leader, yeah. but I think as he's growing, that is is something that maybe I, I'd be surprised if he didn't start to step up into. Um, yeah. But he's just got a really good footballing brain. He reads the game very well and he knows how to use his body. It's it's the dual percentages and the football nerdy statistics with him are very, very impressive. And I mean, his aerial dual rate in terms of the Premier League, um, it's only second to I think it's Esri Konza. Like wow. and and that should really be be telling you what you need to know, especially with where Villa are in the league, you know, how they're pushing yeah. their their defences that we don't tend to think of as the strongest, and yet they have outstanding defenders in them. Yeah, no, 100%. And even comparing Tosin to someone like Saliba, uh, which I'm going to bring up now, you can kind of see that he is you know, very, very good. You know, you see that aerial percentage at the top there. He's fantastic. You know, you think of Saliba and his aerial ability to, to dominate in the air and how good he's been for Arsenal. He's nowhere near uh, Tosin when it comes to the percentiles. So you can kind of see here, very good aerially, good at carrying the ball. Uh, his progressive passes and passes forwards are very good as well, which is something we've said we probably lacked in our centre-backs a lot. It's probably why Gerd was brought in. Um, but Gerd just hasn't been able to adapt with the physicality. Um, and he's been sus you know, susceptible to a lot of mistakes. What you're seeing with Tosin is he can play football forwards, uh, number one. He's not just going to hoof it forwards. He will look to make those progress progressive passes. But also, like you mentioned, zero errors leading to goals this season. He's, he's very defensively assured and he's played in the Premier League now um, for a while. Interestingly, he actually came through the Man City uh, youth team, uh, which is also something people probably don't know about him. So again, he's he's been brought up to play that model, you know, to play on the ball. And I think it would be an amazing signing, especially because it would be a free transfer as well, Slough. Well, yeah, I, I think as well, when you look at it, he's also on a reported 40,000 a week. Um, even just offering him double that um, in terms of 80,000, you can scrap the... Um, fee that we would pay for um for phillips you can give him a chunk of the but the, the that fee you know a, a million signing on bonus that kind of thing and even then you're still not you're not really making a drop in the budget for the summer I mean, it's, it's also likely we'll probably sell zuma on as well and and again so we're going to need not only numbers but we're going to need that quality in numbers and, and you're know, finding these smart deals because he's also homegrown he's still only 26 it's in a position we really really need to strengthen and move on on, on from these kind of injury prone or uh, error prone players it just makes sense doesn't it uh for me it's it's a it's a 10 out of 10 sort of signing in terms of on paper these are the sort of deals that you want to be aiming for. And mm -hmm. in the past, I would have been a little bit worried that we'd be aiming more towards uh, Lloyd Kelly from Bournemouth. And and this <laughs> it's no slant against him. He's just a bit more injury prone. And that's my worry when we're looking yeah. at deals. You know, he would be a great addition for depth. But someone like Tossin is someone who can potentially push to start and and also take us further. So... It's um, it's the sort of, of deal that I would really like us to get done, get early in the window, get him settled in. Granted, he's only moving from Fulham over to uh, over to uh, West Ham, but it's it's not a big move. Um, but I think in terms of getting it done, it's it's one of those that I, I think we should be all over. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think because of the budget, we're going to have to work with this this summer. I think we're. We're going to have another, we keep saying it every summer, but we're going to have that rebuild, likely a new manager. Do you think this is more of a Tim Steiden push rather than a David Moyes push? Because again, we don't know what the managerial situation is going to be in the summer. And it looks like if we're trying to push this now in April, we're trying to get it in place for, you know, ahead of the summer before he, uh, for when he becomes a free, free agent. I don't really want to put it in either's camp. I think this is just a logical push, you know. Yeah. We need homegrown players. This top quality centre back is free in the summer, and I think just anyone who's got a brain would be looking at it and thinking, "Yeah, this is a this is a deal that we should get done." Doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, 
a statement signing for a centre back, but it's it's one that makes sense. And as I mentioned, build the squad, get the get the quality. If a deal comes up for an outstanding centre back, and then you have quality in that position, you can say to to toss in and Maverick Palace, look, this guy's going to start because he's he's a he's a renowned player, but you've yeah. got a chance to fill in next to him. So, you know, fight it out. Yeah, exactly. And we, we said we need strength in depth, not just strength in that first 11. We now need to start building a squad uh, to compete because, again, it's it's likely that lack of squad depth this season is going to hurt us in both league, uh, both domestically and in Europe. So, Tosin, let us know in the comments what you would think about this sign-in. Um, we're very much behind it. We think it makes absolute sense. So, it'll be interesting to see if we can get this one over the line for the summer transfer window coming up in June. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the analysis. Um, make sure to comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And Sloth, until next time. Carbon, Carbon you eyes. eyes.